the 24,504 worst pieces of advice ever published. In a tiny section of the bookstore that no sane person ever enters lies a secret underworld of musings and advice-like tidbits, books that offer hundreds, sometimes thousands, of tiny wisdoms. Well, I bought a pile of those books, hoping to gain knowledge from the cute commentary. After reading 24,504 folksy nuggets, I learned two things. These books are not to be trusted, and there's a gun in my mouth. 14,000 Things to be Happy About by Barbara N. Kipfler, 1990 $6.95 or 2014 gems per dollar. Barbara N. Kipfler has absent-mindedly compiled a disorganized list of things and called it a book. About 1% of them are things that make people happy, like sleepyheads or fish. But the rest seems to be made up entirely of things that pass across her eye as she thumbs through catalogs or food she happens to be in the mood for. More or less, it's a diary of a lonely, hungry woman who never learned what a sentence was. It doesn't seem like she moved any items around after churning out the whole list, so sometimes you'll hit patches where you seem to watch her mind go down a long path. Hmm, things to be happy about. Drug stores, getting back correct change, headlines at the checkout lane, clerks not calling out a price check on Vagisil, applying soothing cream, rereading confusing instructions, applying soothing cream, making awkward eye contact with cats, surprise guests. Tolerable Temperatures I can tell that Barbara isn't the kind of woman that reaches for the stars, but tolerable temperatures? If you're made notably happy by tolerable temperatures, you'd probably chain together orgasms from a cookie. I think Barbara might actually be my dream girl. You could wave at her from the PlayStation and she'd be riding that eye for a week. Hot Dog Buns Every author hopes to be remembered by future generations for their wisdom. Ralph Waldo Emerson probably died with an enormous erection, knowing that his words would one day mark the beginning of every high school valedictorian speech. Did Barbara imagine that when she wrote hot dog buns, did she picture someone some day using her immortal words? People of the future, welcome. You know, a wise person once said hot dog buns. Take these words with you as the future chairs on which you sit burrow cyber tentacles into your body. From this moment on, the flesh harvesting minds of Glar will be your home and your grave. How about a little drinky poo? Ziggy saying. Fuck you, lady. How about that? Classic comeback. Manhole covers. Try to think about a time in your life you, where you were so depressed, you had to turn to the fact that manhole covers exist for comfort. There's not even a word for that kind of depression. And if there was, you would have to beat a bleeding walrus to death with a violin in order to pronounce it. But I think I might be stealing the idea from how George Lucas made Chewbacca's voice. Familiar Sounds from the Deep South Why, I do declare, Mr. Beauregard, these mint juleps are fine, fine companion to this morning's overhearings of banjos and rape. Calling someone at home No one likes interacting with answering machines, but I imagine that the invention of the caller ID hit this woman harder than anyone. Hi, you two. I keep missing you. Well, this is Barbara again. I just wanted to call and chat about happiness. Things like, oh, let's see, phones, carrying phones into kitchens, opening gas ovens, broken pilot lights, heads in gas ovens, shiny cigarette lighters, long pauses, the sharp whistle of accelerant igniting, chilling silences. I'll call back in seven minutes. Sweater vests. Fine. Sweater vests sort of make me happy, too. I'm not a monster. It's the pits. When she runs out of things in her line of sight, Barbara sometimes writes down little sayings that make her happy. You know what? Good for her. We're very proud of you, Barbara. Oh, I'm so hopped up on positive energy of reading Cuticle Cream and Sylvester Stallone Actor, I could burst. 500 Great Things About Being a Dad Steve Delson, 2001 895 or 56 gems per dollar 
Steve Delson is a sentimental father with the wisdom of a much dumber man who happened to write down five hundred intimate memories. Number 358. Dancing Your Baby to Sleep to Natalie Merchant. Number 291. Eventually Your Toddler Will Stop Biting. Some will make you laugh, some will make you cry, but both of these things only have a chance of happening if you are actually Steve Delson. 19. Hearing your toddler ask for a piece of yikin. Everything your kid does seems cute to you. Which is the natural biological defense against discarding things that wail or squirt poop? The problem is, being surrounded with such cuteness all day ruptures a parent's cute containment system. Then, all those cute little stories start spilling out whether they're relatable to anyone else or not. You know why there's not a national council in charge of pronouncing chicken correctly? Because no one fucking cares, Steve! 20. Hearing her ask if she can sit on your yap. Ha! <laughs> ah, that's not right at all, you racist kid. Keep doing it! Daddy's going to finish his book in an hour at this rate. 21. Hearing her tell people she's still yittle. Look, I'm not a doctor, Steve. But you need to stop transcribing your kid's speech impediments and get it to an orthodontist. 129. Having smart kids confuses your enemies. Did you just watch Home Alone? What the shit does that mean? Well, after careful thought, I think I have narrowed it down to three possibilities. A. He doesn't get along with people at work. Steve, I just came by your desk to tell you that you are so stupid your kid probably can't even place in a spelling bit. What's this? A seventh place spelling bee ribbon? I was wrong about you, Steve. You're all right. B. He lives in a neighborhood that's bad. Give me your wallet, fool. Holy crap, is that kid holding a clock made out of a potato? What were we talking about? Was I? Oh, yeah, I think I was giving you my wallet. See ya. C. His children are a squad of heroes that make math fun. Ah. How did those accursed Calcumaster Juniors get past the puzzles of my sinister math maze so quickly? No matter. They'll find the caverns of bicycle safety and diabetes even more treacherous. 135. You can astonish them with your ability to make eggs. Astonished by eggs, huh? I guess not all of his kids are, how do I put this delicately, confusing to his enemies.